Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world goodness. Over the weekend I got to play the first game with my Beastmen. These were one of the last armies I collected during the old 8th edition fantasy and I was very keen to get them back on the table and see how they performed. Now I didn't report it as a battle report as the miniatures were not fully painted and I do want all the miniatures and battle reports to be fully painted, obviously. But it did inspire me to uh, get one of the miniatures painted and that's what I'm going to do in today's video. This is another one of those videos where I think you guys will enjoy it and have a, a good time and I think it'll be an interesting video. But it's definitely one of those ones that I'm kind of doing for me. I love this miniature. I've owned it since the day it came out. I put it together the day it came out and it sat in a case left unloved for so, so many years because I was intimidated by it. I'm intimidated by it no more. I'm going to tackle it in today's video. And that is, of course, the epic Beastman Doom Bull. This is a uh, metal miniature from head to toe. It is a very heavy piece and uh, I'm excited to get some paint on and see how it turned out in the end. So if that's something that excites you, stick around and enjoy the video. Before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons and everyone else out there who has supported me in every single way possible. Without you guys, I could not continue doing what I am doing. So if you like the channel and you want to see it grow and succeed even further, then please do think about supporting it. There's links to things like my Patreon below. Make sure you're liking the videos and subscribe if you're not already. All of those things help me out immensely. Okay, without further ado, let's jump in and get this Doom Bull painted. And here is my good old faithful Doom Bull. As you can see, it's on its old 40 millimeter base. It like barely fit on this thing. Trying to get him to fit into a unit was also a disaster. You can see how old the black spray was. It, it's rubbed off or it's faded or I did a really bad job back in the day. I don't really know. But I think it's time to upgrade him onto his new 50 by 50 millimeter base, which he fits on much more comfortably. And I think will fit into a unit of Minotaurs if I so choose to run him that way. I, as usual, am afflicted by my curse of giving all of my Warhammer character miniatures tactical rocks to make them stand taller on the battlefield, stand out in big units, and just look more menacing and more awesome. So I did exactly the same thing with my Doom Bull. Use two layers of cork to make them good and tall. I used a lot of super glue to make all the cork go hard. Then I used clippers in my fingers to pull apart and shape the rocks into a more natural looking shape before spraying the model and getting them ready for paint. So I sprayed them black and then sprayed them gray sear, as is tradition with my videos. And as you can see, he is a beautiful miniature. He's an old hand sculpted model. Uh, he's just awesome. And I, I genuinely, I was when I decided to do him today, I, I was looking forward to the end of the day where I got to see what he was going to turn out like. And now I'm very excited to get him on a tabletop as well. As per usual, when I'm doing models with large amounts of skin, I tend to lean quite heavily on the Duncan Rhodes Tooth and Coats paint. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So it's the Barbarian Flesh is the first coat that I do. Now I will leave in the description below a link to the conversion chart. All of the paints that uh, is in the two thin coats range has an alternative in uh, the Games Workshop paint. So you don't have to run out and grab these paints if you don't have them. Berserker Bloodshade was then used across all of the skin. I knew if I had have gone through the normal triad of skins, it would look a little bit too pale. And obviously this thing is an angry Doom Bull and I wanted to have a little bit more life and a little bit more, I don't know, power, or anger, or just, just a red tinge to it. So I gave it a coat of this all over. It did go a little bit darker than I was expecting. It looks like this guy has been to the beach and forgot to put on sunscreen, so he's gotten a little bit sunburned, but... Obviously, when we work up the rest of the skin tones, using the Dwarven skin as the first coat. And as you can see, I'm very carefully layering up the musculature areas of this miniature. Getting all the higher portions of the skin to be all layered up and leaving all the recesses and cracks and nooks with the dark blood shaded shaded contrast, if that's a sentence. Working carefully around things like the face. This is the only, I think, slightly bad thing about this miniature. It's not a bad thing, it's just a, a design choice, obviously. He's in his awesome two-handed axe grip, but unfortunately that arm coming across his torso is blocking a lot of the detail. And I think his face is really obscured. It was really difficult to find, like, to get photographs or to show me painting the face of the model. As you can see, it's just so blocked up by horns or the axe or his arms or my hand. It's just, it was a nightmare. But I was quite pleased and proud of the result I was getting with the face and thinking you guys could see the result that I was getting. 
but unfortunately those parts in the way. Now, like I said, this is just the first coat of skin. So we are then, of course, going to jump up to the higher coat again. Before I did that, I decided to throw some texture paste on the base and blend in that rocky ground that he's standing on with that. Really simple technique, but I like to do this, you know, as early in the day as possible so it has time to dry. And then we jumped up to the Elven skin paint for the final highlight on the skin. And this is very much just really light kind of touch highlights across the miniature and only focusing on the kind of higher points. So bits that are, you know, pointing towards the light source, which is above for most of my miniatures. You don't have to go crazy, you know, in armpits or, you know, underneath bits like that or the bottoms of arms. You're just looking for the highest points to get that final highlight. I always found adding the last highlight is the bit that made the area pop the most. It really just pushes the model to the next level. So I do find that learning to use the triad systems and really pushing yourself, you can make character miniatures and big important monsters really stand out. After the skin was layered up, now obviously it is an old miniature, it's an old design. It's not as perfectly sculpted as some of the newer designs are. It has its own charm, so some of the shapes and stuff are a little bit odd. And you just gotta roll with the punches and make it work. From here we're gonna move over to Gore Grunta fur and apply this to, well, all the fur on the miniature. So obviously he has a big mohawk of fur going down the middle of his back. And then protruding through most of his armor panels. Whether it be on his chest, or on his greaves. On his thigh armor, there's obviously some fur poking out that you're going to get in with that Gorgrunta fur as well. This is a quick and easy step. It gives a really nice coat after. I do end up shading this, but I don't end up layering it at all. I just really like the final result. Obviously, the skin is now finished on this model. So when we're applying things like Gorgrunta fur or any other stage of the painting for that matter, you want to take your time. You want to be really careful. You don't want to have to hit the skin and then go back and try and kind of blend that in or get rid of it. It's, uh, it's kind of difficult. Gargax Sewer was pulled in to use for all the leather straps holding on his armor or his belts, his equipment holding on trophies. Gargax Sewer has become one of my go-to paints I really lean on when it comes to the base coats for leather straps and stuff like that. Iron Warriors is the metallic I decided to go as the base coat for all of the silver parts. Obviously, you does have some big heavy armor plates. And I went for Iron Wires is a darker silver than Lead Belcher and I plan on layering with Lead Belcher. I want this model to still be quite kind of grim and dark and a beaten iron look to all the metallics. And I didn't want to go too bright so I thought if I start with, started with Iron Warrior, shaded that down and then layered it up with some Lead Belcher, I would get a result that I was happy with. I've never really done it before this way, usually it's Lead Belcher shade back to Lead Belcher. But I wanted to give this a shot and I'm surprised to say that I think it really worked and it looks great so I'm going to perhaps continue doing that moving forward. I'm also running low on lead belcher, so don't judge me. And this model does have a larger quantity of silver than you would expect, mainly because the model is so big. Things like the axe are huge. Balthazar gold was then used for lots of the trims. So obviously he's got these big armored parts on the end of his horns. There's some extra detail holding the, the axe blade onto the half of the axe. Another trim and just fancy details based here on the armor that you're going to pick out and do in gold. Once again, taking your time and trying not to hit any of the other surfaces. And you can obviously change up where you want the gold to be yourself. Like I said, I've got 12 minotaurs to paint myself at this stage. So I'll be picking and choosing on each one where I decide to put the different colors. Agros Dunes was then pulled in for all of the bone parts. Now there is these like hanging stone pendants on him as well. I decided to change it and decide that they were going to be uh, carved bone. So I did them with the Agros Dunes as well. If you're doing them, you can hit them with a Basilicanum Grey and then shade them down the same as the rest of the model. And just add a light highlight of something like Mechanica Standard if you do want to uh, go the stone route. I like the idea of it being carved bone. I think it's much more ritualistic for the Beastmen. And things like the Doomble. So with all the base coats now on the model, it's time to add a shade. Obviously I need to darken down these areas, so I'm gonna go for Agrax Earthshade. And we're gonna apply this to the entire model, except the skin. So all the metallics, all the bone, all the fur, belts, buckles, all those kind of bits and pieces, we're gonna hit with the Agrax Earthshade. And we're gonna make sure we don't hit the skin. Now we'll stain it in a way that we don't want to do. If we end up getting it all over the skin, we'll have to relayer the skin and that will be a nightmare. It'll be a waste of time. 
This will, of course, once again, darken down those metallics again, which is exactly what I wanted to do because it then meant that layering it up with something as dark even as Lead Belcher was still going to give me a really nice highlight color. You can see how much it pops and screams off the model, even with the first few brush strokes. It will also allow me to do the, uh, the kind of look on the blade where it's been, you know, he used an old rock to sharpen that blade over and over again. It's all scuffed and scraped and it's only really the, the edge of the blade which is still keen and really sharp and bright metal. The rest is dull and used to death. This thing has been killing and waging war on the plains of the old world for God only knows how many decades at this point to become a doom bull leading a huge host of beastmen. That silver can also be pulled over and used to highlight all the Baldazar gold as well, giving you a really nice result on the blade. On the axe as a whole, to be honest. From here, we're going to use things like Katachan Flesh. That's going to be going over all the belts and straps we did with the Gargax Sewer. Once again, it's a quick, easy technique. Quick, easy color, color transition. Um, it won't jump off the page. You definitely don't want the belts to stand out a lot. They just want to be nice in the background pieces. You know, base coated, shade and layered without going too bright or too crazy. You choose the parts of the model you want to go bright with, like the skin for me, or the other highlight point will be the axe. The rest of the details kind of blend into the background. Xandri Dust was then brought in and used to highlight all the bone parts. So once again, all those carved bone uh, totems or effigies or whatever you want to call them. And then of course, all the horns and stuff like that that's protruding from the shoulder armor, his head, of course. As you can see, the detail is really starting to jump out in this miniature. He is very much edging closer to the finish line as we speak. To make him stand out a little bit more, I went for some blood for the blood god. Remembering this guy is a phrased, frenzied killing machine. Even in the game, he has a special kind of frenzy, which gives him an extra two attacks, as opposed to just one. So I decided to use the same technique as I did for the sharp edge of the blade, but apply that to... Uh, Blood for the Blood God to give it the idea that this guy has been hacking through the enemy on a battlefield for hours. Not only will there be blood on his blade, but I decided to grab the toothbrush, cover that in blood of flex. Now you see the flick technique adds a kind of droplets or flecks of blood over an area. So I do this across the Doom Bull very lightly just to give him the appearance of kind of splattered blood all over him and give him that really grim look that I think a Doom Bull on a battlefield should have. Added some grass tufts to the bottom. And then I will call this beautiful Doom Bull complete. Like I said, I've owned this miniature for, I'd say, at least 10 years, if not longer. And now he's finally painted and ready to be on tabletop. That makes me really happy. I'm really happy with this old world series, getting to dig through my old piles of shame, pull out models that I should have painted many years ago and giving them a new lease of life and getting them ready to once again return to the tabletop, something I didn't think a lot of these models would ever get a chance to do. And that just makes me eternally happy. I hope you guys are very much enjoying the old world series on the channel. If you are, make sure you show some love to these videos. Make sure you're liking them, uh, comment on them, and then uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. But uh, let's give my uh, final verdict before we say goodbye for this video. Okay, guys, there we have it. A Doom Bull is still so heavy. <laughs> It's just a beast of a thing. As now painted up and ready for the tabletop. I didn't actually use this in my game over the weekend, um, but now that it is fully painted, I will definitely be fielding this alongside my 12 Minotaurs and having a pretty epic game. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you let me know by liking the video. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below, including letting me know what other old world content you want to see. I have a huge backlog of miniatures and I would be more than happy to paint them up in videos for you guys. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel to help this channel grow even further and reach more people. Appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.